This computer terminal provides full access to the LCARS computer net. All right. Well, hey guys, welcome to the LCARS ADV subspace channel. And finally, after like a year of waiting, she has arrived. The new GPX TSE 300R. Woohoo! Well, here she is. Let's unwrap this awesome present. Well, there she is in all her glory. Well, I'm pretty sure she'll be uh, well worth the wait. But we're going to do our, um, our uh, setup video here. I've done a few of these already, but... Uh, this will be the fourth GPX bike that I have purchased, so obviously I like them. So here we go, let's get going here. Engage. Okay, well these things come packed just like this. GPX always does a great job packing these. Everything is really secure and uh, nothing bouncing around in the packaging, so that is always good to see. But uh, yeah, first things first, you start just... Uh, I'm doing all these bolts on the frame here and get the frame off so you can uh, start putting her together. Okay, got her all un, uh, untangled and all those uh, shipping wires and such, but the first thing I like to do is start with the handlebar. So once we get that on, then we can uh, control the bike a lot easier. So when, when we get it off the uh, the final, uh, the crate thing that it's bolted down to, so we'll have something to grab. So we'll start with that. Obviously, you want to start by undoing the shipping bracket here. All right. Good opportunity to slide our throttle tube on before we uh, seat the handlebar. Oh, a little looser. There we go. All right. Just want to get that, get that on there, just so you can handle the bike a little better. Then once we get our handlebars on, we can get our clutch and our brake levers on. And uh, I, well, you know, a lot of this stuff that I'm kind of preliminary putting on, I'm gonna probably go back. Oh, I definitely, I'm gonna go back and Loctite a lot of this stuff, like the. Like, I'm going to put Loctite on these for sure, you know, but, so, I'm just kind of trying to get this so I can work with the bike off the, off its stand and stuff, so, but yeah, so a lot of the stuff, I, I you know, you got a Loctite stuff for sure. All right, next thing I'm going to do, since I got the handlebars kind of, you know, just situated there for a little bit, uh, I'm going to get the uh, front wheel on, so you're going to need to take these, take the clamps, loosen these, and then uh, punch out the uh, little uh, holder thing of a jiggy in there <laughs> so we can go ahead on that yeah I like to use a jack to raise it up a little bit and then um, forgot to mention you should probably put your kickstand on first before you put your front tire on because <laughs> uh, you gotta lean it somewhere all right got your nice kickstand here and this is a good opportunity to talk about some little things that I see that they've changed for the good uh, having had four models starting from 2019, I've seen the little changes over the years. And this right here is a, is definitely a nice change. Um, kickstands are, you know, they're kind of a crapshoot on bikes. But what I see this year is you got a nice bushing with an O-ring there. That was not on the, last, the other year's model. You know, the, just the assembly is a lot nicer here, you know. And uh, the spring is nicer. The whole kickstand is just nicer. Uh, some, uh, you know... I'm starting to see some fine uh, quality improvements over all, all on the bike, you know. Uh, for instance, I'm, I'm the frame here has like got this nice powder coating on it. Other model years didn't have that. It looks really nice this year. New gas cock right here. That's different. That's a different model. It's tucked in further. The other ones used to kind of stick out far. And, you know, you potentially could snag it on a branch or something. But they tuck that in there and... And that's so far, I'm just seeing like the, the little 
quality improvements that GPX does year by year, and it's really nice to see just the the build quality improve every single year. But these are these are some nice changes here, and um, so far, yeah, really impressed. So yeah, all right, let's get this kickstand on, huh? Right, you're obviously gonna need your front wheel. You're gonna need your axle, and you're gonna need your your spacers here. Uh, this one's on your my left but on the right side of the bike this one is on my right but on the left side of the bike this is for your uh discard right here so so anyways they go on the uh rim of course and then you gotta wiggle that on there and get the uh axle through there but you're gonna take a little screwdriver or something Pry the brake pads apart so you can get your uh, your disc in there. This is how I dump my all my new bikes. I always dump in the garage. Very first time they always dump in the garage. So so I'll try to wiggle this on here and without dumping the bike. Yeah. You, uh, hit your axle through there, and if it's binding at all, just stop what you're doing and you know just undo the bind. So it should it should go on very very easily. So and after that we'll just. Uh, We'll just slightly pinch the bolts here, just to keep it on, and we'll just revisit that at a later step. Now we have the front wheel on, yay, all right, that's awesome. Got two wheels now, didn't dump it, that is always good. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, so... The next part, I think we'll start working on our controls. So start feeding, getting our cables where they should all be and our controls mounted, situated. And uh, yeah, we'll go through there. And uh, ooh, there's another new thing there, got an hour meter now. So that's that's cool, they stuck an hour meter on there. That's pretty neat. That's another new, a new thing. Um, so far, really impressed with the, just the build quality of this bike so far it looks fantastic this is my first uh, uh, non-linkage or PDS version of a bike I, I've always wanted one um, not that I'm against linkage at all but um, yeah re really excited to try that out and then um, yeah I mean this bike uh, so far is looking pretty dang good this 300 <laughs> This is like a, a dream bike here. I mean, you got electric start, kick start, got a radiator, got a radiator fan. I mean, that, that's, man, this bike uh, comes with every, all the goodies, man. I mean, you get a lot of stuff with these bikes. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this is, look at that, even powder coated right up here, too. I mean, this is nice. This, this frame is just, like, awesome. It's way better than they used to be. And they were good before, you know I mean? But the, just the finish quality seeing seeing them update just little tiny things you know from the bolts up is just great to see from a manufacturer year to year they don't just stick with it they take feedback and and they uh improve so really excited to see that and uh yeah oh another thing too which is um look at that got a hydraulic clutch now oh man that's so cool so yeah really excited about that um, the only thing this bike doesn't have is the blinkers like the other ones have, but that's okay. Uh, change our number plate out for our, our nice, beautiful LED headlight that GPX has. And uh, once we get going on that, then we can start working on our controls and wires and everything. And getting all that situated. You can install the new headlight, you're going to need to put your front fender on. So all you're going to need to do is remove the four uh, bolts they have there and then obviously screw it in and then you can uh, start installing your headlight the time to point this out they started this a couple years ago but this is another example of gpx just kind of upgrading and making small changes for the better you know you never used to get these bushings for the bolts and all the plastics but that's what they come with now uh, standard which is that's a nice uh, little touch and then also the uh you know, just all the the Molex connectors and everything, they're all really nice and clean looking. And, um, you know, just a, another thing they updated a couple of years to, for the better. So I just wanted to point that out. 
items where the bolts should get just a little bit of Loctite. So your running lights are going to be your green and white. Your brake is going to be your black and green. Let's give that a go. Got our headlight connected. We, you know, we get our little <coughs> rubber protector thing, whatever it's called, <laughs> around your Molex connectors. And now it's time to situate your, you know, your start, your start button, your kill switch, and your headlight connectors. So we get those situated, and then we can um, start cleaning up our wires and zip tying any excess wire, get them behind the headlight. So we got our headlight switch here, we got our kill switch here, and our start button right here. And then you're going to want to just kind of situate these kind of where you want them. And then you're going to want to, you know, get your uh, clutch lever and your brake lever tilted down a little bit, you know, your preference, how you ride. And then uh, you're going to want to snug those down. When you get your controls how you want them, uh, the next thing you want to do is uh, zip tie the wires nice and neat. Uh, the box did include some zip ties. Where a headlight goes on is, you know, any excess wires, you know, that had got a little slack there, you're probably going to want to either zip tie up or tuck away. Um, just remember this guy right here. Um, you got to leave a little slack in it because that's going to be bouncing up and down. Uh, with the suspension, you don't want that to rip out or something. That is your speedometer cable. So, all right, next, here we go. I'm going to take the throttle cable off and, and tuck it behind the forks because it's sticking out. So I'm probably going to take that off. But another new thing I noticed for another little upgrade here, not a big deal, but they used to always have the dual uh, throttle cable housing. So they finally just put the single one on there. So that's a nice little upgrade. So we got our controls on all nicey nice. And, you know, this this may alter, you know, depending on... You know what I prefer, and there may maybe some changes, but the, this is just a general put the bike together type of video here. So, so we got that on, and what are we gonna do next? I think we're gonna start torquing some um, some bolts here. So, okay, well we put the seat on because I didn't see why not, but holy cow, that's a new one too. The seat is like this is like a seat concept seat right here. It's really nice. What a nice upgrade this is. Yeah, very premium. <laughs> so anyways, I think we're, what we're going to do now is we're going to start torquing some stuff down. We're going to torque the uh, triple clamps. Why you want to get your triple clamps torque settings right is because if you don't, uh, the suspension could bind. Um, I looked it up. So the top is 20 newton meters and this is 15 newton meters, the bottom of the triple clamp. And then... Also, we're going to go over our our uh, pinch clamps here and um, getting the forks aligned. So there is a procedure for that. Again, if you don't do the procedure right, your forks will bind. And so you got to get it aligned right. So the process is, is that you, you hit your axle spindle in as far as it will go. And then you um, kind of just loosely... Or just tighten these a little bit just so it holds the, the axle and come over here Torque that down there. I, I want to say it's 45, but look it up and and Find out what the spec is. I don't remember offhand, but you want to tighten that one Then you want to torque these down. I think they're 15 and then then you come back over here Then you loosen these back up And then once you get them loosened back up you come over here And hit the front brake and compress the forks a few times and then put the kickstand back down and try not to jostle it and then come back over and now tighten those pinch clamps right there or this pinch clamp here and I believe that's 15 newton meters so that is the torquing for that next what we're going to do is we're going to um, torque our spokes <laughs> um, I didn't do this my last bike and man I paid for it <laughs> uh, at the end of the second day of an event my spokes were completely loose and my rim was like just like it was wobbling side to side really bad 
So yeah, this definitely want to definitely want one of these. Uh, the Tusk makes a great little torque wrench for this. I definitely recommend having a torque wrench for this. You, you'll need one if you ride dirt bikes. You should have one of these anyways, because you constantly have to check your your spoke torque. Not constantly, but you know, just every once in a while. So basically, you're gonna pick pick a spot. Like usually, the rim lock is a great spot. I have uh, I'm doing 48 inch pounds. Uh, your mileage may vary. You can yell at me in the comments if you disagree. Uh, but basically, we're gonna start with the rim lock and the, the first spoke here, and then we're gonna skip two, and then go to the next one. So say we're on one, two, three, four, skip two, two, three, four, skip two, two, three, four, skip two, and so on. So in that way, you'll get around the rim three times uh, by doing that. So just. Uh, but that's what I'm going to do next. I'm just going to I'm going to torque uh, get these all these spokes to torque. All right, awesome. What we're going to do we're going to install our disc guard here. I already got the little screws right there, and then we are going to take our uh, brake uh, caliper uh, bolts off and put some Loctite on those. If there isn't already Loctite from the factory, but who knows? Well, we're going to take them off and check that. Don't want your brake caliper coming off. We're going to check our chain tension and alignment in the rear, and then we're going to torque our rear axle nut. I believe that is 80 newton meters. And let's get that done now, too. Um, the factory definitely did over tighten this one, so that's an, another confirmation of why you always want to check your, your torque uh, throughout the bike. Now, as I said before, we're going to go back to our handlebar mounts and revisit the torque and the Loctite situation here. So I believe these two are 20 newton meters, and uh, the bolt that's below, right below the bar that goes into the triple clamp is 40 newton meters. Now you're going to want to check, um, obviously, your steering and your pinch on your, your triple clamp. I don't remember what those were. I'll have to look those ones up. So we're going to check all three all uh, four of these and make sure that they have the right torque and loctite okay so this top one is 12 newton meters this one is 20 newton meters but uh yeah so i just want to update you on that as the bike is concerned i would just just go through the bike and you know put loctite on things you you think loctite should be put on you know um i hit the main things though um you know the brake calipers and you know things that vibrate <laughs> but uh, after you do all the, the major stuff I would just go through with a wrench and just uh, just you know put put a wrench on all, on all the nuts and see if they're tight tight or not you know just kind of snug them if they aren't and whatever and go th and go through that step is you need to put coolant in the bike uh, there have been a couple people found out the hard way that you need to <laughs> check for fluid in your radiator yeah these bikes do not come with fluid in the radiator for, and for obvious reasons so yeah put uh put some radiator fluid in there otherwise you'll be need a new engine very shortly <laughs> um i i use this stuff the engine ice i order it off on amazon i like it. it it cools the engine does it run cooler i don't know but i do like it though seems to be good for uh you know Seems to be good for the bike, so that's that's what I wrote. So yeah, that's a free tip there. Put uh, radiator fluid in your uh, bike. Step here is we are going to change out whatever oil they have in here, whatever China oil they have in there, and put some non-China oil in there. So I'm going to empty this and bottle it, and probably send it to Chad Hunter, uh, where he can use it in his Wuhan Wendy bike. So I'm sure he'll be happy as a clam on that one. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it doesn't have like a dipstick or anything like that. So this is your fill hole here. Without being dipstick, there is a little bolt right here, right behind the brake lever spring, which you'll have to remove to probably get to it. And then um, you're going to level your bike out and a little fluid should come out. And that is how you know your level for your fluid. Now where you drain the fluid is over here. Oh, let's uh, stand back down. Let's see if we can find it. First shot. And 
Uh, there's like a little black nut back here behind the, the shifter, and that's where you're going to drain it out. So, yeah. I believe it takes 0 0.8, 0 0.85 of a quart oil. I typically will run um, Rotella T4 usually. So you uh, can run whatever oil you see fit. Or post it on the forum and see what responses you get. What kind of oil should you run? Always, always fun when you do that. Obviously is to put some gas in it. <laughs> um, I run Maxima Super M in my two strokes. I don't get any splooge with it, so I, I seem to like it. I know everybody has their own choice for the oil they run on their bikes. I have been told to run 40 to 1 on this. So that's what I'm going to run. That seems a pretty safe. I bet you could run 50 to 1, no, no problem on this bike. But I'm going to run 40 to 1 for now. And uh, I will report back if that changes. But uh, that is what I'm going to run. Oh, and also uh, it takes 91 octane um, at U.S. pumps. So 91 U.S. pump octane. So uh, run the ethanol free if you can, obviously. And yeah, that's it. As far as the carburetor goes, you're going to have to set it up according to your uh, where you live, your elevation and such. So you're just going to have to play with it and fight, figure out your own jetting. And after that, um, just tear off your, you know, your plastic uh, protective film off your plastics and uh, tire pressures. And, you know, I'm going to change out the put tubeless in the rear. I'll probably run these tires for a little while anyways and then uh, change it over to something else other than a China tire. But actually the stock tires aren't too bad actually. I've run them a, a few times now and they're really not that bad. <laughs> so but uh, um, yeah that really isn't that much to put these bikes together and uh, you know if some idiot on the internet can do it like me then you can do it too. <laughs> so Really, they, they come pretty well packaged where you don't have to do a ton to put them together. But you really, really have to go through the bikes. You know, just take your time and check all the bolts, check all your fluids, make sure everything's right. Now, normally, if you buy, you know, you can buy these bikes from a GPX dealer and they would have done all this stuff for you. But this is for if you bought the bike directly from them from Utah and had it shipped to you. But yeah, it's really not a bad process. You know, if you could turn a wrench, you could put one of these together. I'm really impressed with the build quality of this bike. And I'm just pleased to see every single year GPX has just stepped up their game and upgraded stuff and added quality to parts. So really impressed. So not too bad to put this together. It really, you can do it in half a day and you'll be fine. Um, but yeah, I hope you got I hope this helped you guys. I hope it was informative and you know, you can um always ask a question on the forum uh or you know, post a comment my my uh video here and uh, I'll try to get back to you. And uh yeah, like I said, I hope this was helpful and that is the setup for the bike. All right, live long and ride. See you on the trails.